Ocean's 8 is the spin-off like slash sequel to the Ocean's trilogy that we all know and love. Ocean's 8 follows Debbie, little sister of Danny Ocean. Now, of course, when Debbie gets out of prison, her first thing that she wants to do is pull off a massive heist with a bunch of her friends, as one does. Debbie, played by Sandra Bullock, wants to steal an insanely expensive diamond necklace from a star-studded event, and she needs the right crew to do it. The one thing that I'm going to give this movie is its cast. The cast is definitely the best part about this movie, and all of the actresses in this are very, very good and very different in their styles. Like, this is a group of women that you wouldn't think you'd normally see together. It's a good thing they have great chemistry, though, because without it, this lackluster script and awful dialogue would be so, so much worse. And they do their best to save it. Out of everyone, though, surprisingly enough, I think the show is stolen by Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway plays the woman that they are stealing the necklace from and does a fantastic job of remaining pompous and uptight while somehow still being likable. I had watched the movie The Intern with her and Robert De Niro just the night before watching this. It was incredible to see her do a role like that and then something like this. It truly shows just how stellar of an actress she is. Unfortunately, the movie itself was pretty damn boring. It followed the same formula that every single heist movie has. Meet the team, plan the heist, execute the heist. That's pretty much it. Having recently watched a good and different heist movie, Logan Lucky, I was expecting something a little bit more. During the first act of this movie, I found myself constantly glancing at my phone, just trying to figure out how much time I had to sit here and be subjected to this really boring heist plan. Meeting some of the team was actually pretty cool. I love myself a good montage of meeting different characters, but it wasn't cool enough to make up for that itself. The heist itself amped it back up, and seeing all the pieces fall together in different areas in a perfect way was pretty satisfying. The thing that really puts the nail in the coffin, though, to make this a bad movie is the final 10 minutes. Now, I've said in the past that I like when heist movies don't show you a lot of stuff that's going on on screen. And at the end of the movie, they kind of reveal the stuff that even the audience doesn't know that makes the heist make a lot more sense. It's what every amazing heist movie does. And unfortunately, this movie tries to do that, but... Everything they tell you that happened off screen is either unbelievable or so much cooler than what we actually got. Like, I would have preferred to see the movie that they didn't show us about all the stuff that apparently happened that we didn't get to see. It thinks it's clever, it thinks it's incredibly smart, and that you're just going to go, wow, that's amazing. But really, it just cements it as a bad movie, because I don't know if, I just don't think they knew how to pull off that. So they were just like, well, this is what actually happened. In the end, I'm going to give this movie a three and a half out of ten. It is blessed with a stellar cast of actresses, but never really leaves the shadow of its better predecessors. But thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other reviews.